good everyone i hope you guys have an amazing day so what i'll go, uh, what i'll be doing today i'll be talking about nebula logger um you might have heard about this logger before it's a it's a very popular logging framework out there um though there are other logging framework as well uh, for instance out of Lib, that's a great um logging framework um, so that being said, right, today I wanted to talk about some of the functionality about the uh, Nebula Logger, why a logging framework is very important, right? So if you have worked uh, enough on the Salesforce ecosystem, right, you know when you wanted to log something, the default behavior is, right, you normally go to um, system.debug, which actually creates a log file, and and you troubleshoot from there right and if you are going to use lwc you can obviously do console.log which you can use the browser to uh, view the logging information right these are okay for a short term aspect right but if you wanted to get more comprehensive logging then you have two choice right first you need to um, create your own custom object so which I've seen happen in most of the places, even I've done that in the past. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have that a, a custom object which contains all the necessary information, right? For instance, the logging information, who logs it, the filtering, whether it's an error, whether it's a warning, whether it's an information, right? Um, and other information stuff, right? And which object, which method, you know, if you, as, as long as you can capture the stack trace, right? So that, that will do the job, not a problem at all, right? So, but that will solve the Apex problem. But what about uh, the flows, right? You might have to write your own invocable uh, Apex to make sure that it get logged from the flow as well. Uh, the same goes with the Omni component as well, right? If you are using, uh, you can pretty much use integration procedure um, because there's a try catch option there. So maybe you might have to use a, a, a data raptor pointing to that or an apex, right? You need to figure out in a way, but logging is important. If you don't want the logging to go into the Omni log, uh, right? So to to uh, counter that right and if let's say um you're you're working in an org and you have a logging in place so in that case uh, if the log is doing what is uh, what is supposed to do right then you definitely don't have to worry about a new logger framework but if you're starting out uh new or if you are spinning up a new enterprise org or professional work or for that matter, if you do not have a logger, uh, then I will recommend going with the logger framework, right? Because logger framework covers a lot of things. And my philosophy is that you need to log things, right? And if you're a developer or if you're anybody who building solution on Salesforce ecosystem, for that matter, any any other tech stack, right? Could be Java, could be a C Sharp or, or SAP or any other, right? You need to log the exception, it's very important to log it, right? So that uh, you can troubleshoot things in a very efficient way. If you do not have a logging in place, then think about a scenario, you know, when a user tries to perform uh, a s certain set of actions, right? And then stuff goes wrong. And, now, and if that information is not logged, uh, it gets very difficult for uh, somebody from a company or from or from an admin team or from a uh, from who are looking after the customer uh, troubleshooting aspect, right? Uh, makes it difficult for them to troubleshoot because there is no error information, right? So you might have to rely on customer screenshot and other, but that's not really a reliable, right? Because customer may or may not take it, right? And not every user is a tech savvy. So we need to factor all those uh, things into consideration. So to solve that, you know, the logger framework, getting a logger framework, if you don't have one, is one thing. And second, to encourage the development team to log exceptions, 
information as per the requirement right sometimes you might need to log info sometimes you might need to log warning um, so you can do that using logger framework so nebula logger is an open source framework um, so it's available on a github um, and it's a pretty stable um, framework i've used it i've used it in a few projects even in my current project um, you're trying to use it so uh, there are two ways you can get um, Nebula Logger. Even uh, first you go in the unlocked way or the manage package way, right? I prefer to go with the unlock options, right? Because I don't want to use an open source as a black box with have no access to the, the source control. That's something I do not prefer because then it's very difficult to upgrade. And if you wanted to do custom changes right so the whole point of adopting an open source platform is you have a flexibility if you wanted to extend it right and i'm a big believer that you know of seeing the source code right so we can extend it okay so you can use any of this stuff to install it it's pretty simple to install nothing fancy there right once you install as usual right you can go to um our setup right um, so obviously you can test it out in your developer org, not a problem. Um, so you can go to install package. Um, you want to install package here and you can see that Nebula logger is installed, right? It's pretty, pretty simple. And there are a few settings that you need to consider. So I will tell you in a second. Um, so um how do you gonna use it right before we get into settings right so you must be wondering okay now i've installed the package i as a developer you know when can i start using it and how do i use it right and is it difficult right? because because the thing is that when, when you when you tell somebody hey this is a framework and the person will the first reaction will be uh it is gonna be a difficult one right why do i need an extra framework to learn right so it's pretty straightforward. It's two lines of code. You know, it will get you up to speed, right? Okay, so what I'll do, I will go to a yucky code. Uh, please don't blame me for this yucky code. It's a, it's a yucky code. It is a yucky code. Uh, so I'm trying to demonstrate how do you how can log uh, an info or a an exception, right? So in logger framework in nebula logger so if you wanted to log an info right so you just do logger.info and put the text in right a very simple way to get started right you can have other stuff as well like if you have logger.info so you got a lot of options there and you can use all of this one right which one you wanted to read or which one you wanted to use for us to start with, right, you can use this one, logger.info. If you wanted to log an info, if you wanted to log a warning, you can do, uh, let's think, you can do warn and you can put, um, I'm just gonna try to show you how it works, right? This is a warning, right? Um, and I'm just throwing at some stupid exception to show how to work with an, uh, exception right so this is how you catch an exception and once you catch an exception you log it right and finally you need to save the log if you don't save it you can't see that right so that's pretty simple how to use it right so um that is how you can use an apex now now there are different philosophies right around logging logging is a it's a it's a it's a it's a big topic, right? Because, you know, people who are, who came from a conventional, uh, different tech, tech stack background, they will have different opinions about logging. They'll say, hey, you need to log this, you need to log there, you need to log there, right? Like people who worked with, uh, you know, I don't want to go to the mainframe tech, but let's say C, C++, right? If you're a C++ developer, you know how the logging is very important, right? But that being said, you if you're a developer, you need to know when to log it, right? Would you be logging inside a loop? That's a question you should be asking yourself, right? Depends upon the context. Is that needed, right? Are you, yes, if you wanted to troubleshoot something, yes, you log it, but are you going to build up the log entries by putting in a loop, right? Not really. 
if that is what you wanted to do, right, then you need to consider uh, the log purge, right? So Nibbler Logger has the capability to purge the logs. So I'll show you the setting. Um, so in a second. Um, or other option you need to consider, you know, what happens if you have a class calling a method and that method calls another method, right? So what happens to the error which get triggered from the child method? Are you going to capture that in the parent method or are you going to capture that in the child method, right? So that kind of things you need to consider, you need to factor. I mean, obviously, if you're a senior developer, you will know, right? Uh, how these things works but if you are a junior it's always good to seek assistance from somebody senior because like i said right logging is an art right you shouldn't be logging every damn thing right that defeats the whole purpose then you are cluttering your log table um, so there is a balance that needs to be maintained right so obviously exceptions needs to be logged which is a default uh, opinion um, I mean, I believe most of you will agree that an exception needs to be logged. Uh, the logging and info, logging a warning, logging and other stuff, that's based on context, right? So if you wanted to um, troubleshoot, right, for that logging, different stuff matters. Uh, now, that's how you can do that in an apex the same way you can put that in lwc you just do logger.info logger.exception into a console.log you can use the logger it will work right um so that's how simple it is right i mean obviously we don't use visual force so i don't really wanted to talk about it um so for lwc for apex you can log that in a very simple way now what happened to flows right can you log it right? Yes, obviously there, you can log using flow. So now for a flow, right? I believe, you know, flow is, I don't really want to get into the nitty gritties of flows, but uh, I personally believe it's good to have a framework or container, log, log, log container. So let me give you an example, right? Um, so this is a stupid um, flow, which contains the logger um, action. And so obviously, you know, here, what I'm doing, I'm hard coding the value. You can pretty much create an input variable and use this flow as a subflow where you need a logging, right? So this way you don't have to create a, uh, or you can also customize it based on, right, other fields here. There are, you know, there are a lot of options here. So you can customize it. So. That's one way if you wanted to make it as a container, uh, like a modularized way, right? Because I believe, you know, flows should be used in a modular way rather than a spaghetti pile. You're putting everything in a one flow. That's not a really great option, right? So you can do that and hook up in a, um, um, as a, as a subflow, right? That's one of the, the flow pattern, which, which all works for you. But I think this is one of the pattern. I would use it but because I don't like to duplicate the component, right? I would rather, if you have more than two components, which is getting duplicated, put it in the subflow, right? And I can hook it up. So so you can, so what I did, right? So you go here um, and you go to action. And if you go into logger, right? You can see different options there. You can add it. And, you know, so if I run it, for instance, debug, right? Right, so it would generate a log. Now, where do you see that, right? Obviously, the log is generated. So do you have to go and query a log entry table using Sokol? Not really, because in when you install Nebula Logger, what happens, right, it install some interfaces for an admin to go and work and install some dashboards, which makes it very simple, right? So what do you do? You go into this <clears throat> or, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and just type Nebula. Uh, you can pretty much hide this one though, right? Using permission sets, so that's all possible. Um, here, what happens, you have this thingy and you obviously have drop down. So I go to logs. And obviously all logs, if I do all logs, so 
you can see that the latest one, 87. So if I go here, um, I, you can see that it's a debug and you can see the level. Uh, now, before I explain to you guys more, uh, let me go back here and let me run that Apex code. So this one, right? So because I've added the warning, I wanted to show you how it looks like. So if I go to, so I run this, right? So this will generate three uh, actual uh, stuff. That is the info, warning, and error. And then the finest one based on the save. So if I go here and refresh it, um, you would see something, uh, this one, right? It's a CPU. Now, if you go to details, now you can see the info, warning, error, finest. Now, think about it, right? If you wanted to uh, filter out all the errors, you can do that because there is a level in Nebula Logger, right? And if you wanted to send this log for to another you know, log engine platform, right? Use, where you can do analytics and other stuff, you can do that, right? And you, you can also filter stuff using um, uh, the levels, right? And also there is a dashboard which you can have a look. So if I go here to the dashboard, um, so if I go to log admin dashboard, It is a interesting one, right? So if I refresh it, so you can see that we have the errors, we have one warning. So this can be handy, may not be. I mean, depends on who's looking at it, right? Uh, but I mean, I normally don't look at it, right? If, 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 if there's an error, I obviously we want to read the log file. Um, okay, now one thing. Right, so we got this all of these logs. Right, I wanted to purge it, or will it get purged by default? So, if I take this example of this log, right, and if I go to the details now, there's a field called log retention date. So, you can say the log retention date is here. So, you can control it uh, using the logger settings. So, there's a purge date. Uh, for instance, um, which is this, right? Um, sorry, not this one. Okay, let me let me show you anyways, right? So when you install Nebula Logger, right, uh, you will get by default 14 days log retention by default, out of box. Right now, if, if you think that you wanted to change it to let's say a day, you don't want because your your company has a policy, whatever reason, every log needs to be deleted next day. Right, you can do that. Now, this is the log which I've created uh, when I installed the Nebula Logger. Now you are also seeing a log which I've created just now. Right now, let's look at that log. Uh, so if I go here, all logs. So if I've so this log I've created just now, right? And if I go to details, now if I look at the retention date, it's one. Now I must be thinking, hmm, what's happening there, right? Because you've just now uh, demonstrated uh, to us that using another log, the log retention date is 14 days from today, right? How is that possible, right? So what I've done. Um, if I go to this place, home, right, there is a setting here. You can also do that uh, from the custom settings, but you can add it from here. So I have done the days to retail logs. I created an entry, right? I created a new. Then I put the days to retail log as one. So Every time a log is generated, it will make sure your days to retail logs will be set to next day, right? Just for a day. 
you can change it to 14, you can change it to 30, you can change it to, you know, uh, 72 days. Depends upon your company policy, right? So you need to work with your admins or your operation team or your security team to understand, hey, my business is generating logs. How long do you think we should retain a log, right? Um, so now you must be wondering, uh, what happens to the data masking, right? Obviously, you don't want it to log the sensitive information. So there is a data masking <clears throat> custom metadata option we have. So if you go to set setup, um, and if you go to custom um, metadata, metadata types, right? Um, so now you have the log rule, so you can create a rule, and based on that, you know it will it will take care of it, right? As you can see here. So we do have an option to mask the data so that it's not visible. Uh, so uh, it won't be a compliance issue, right? I understand that some place, right? Compliance is a big. I mean, obviously, in every place, right? You shouldn't be exposing customer personal information that is a compliance by default right and that's pretty dumb thing to do right who will expose customer personal information and i won't be comfortable using that system at all if if you're exposing my personal information right which is like for instance a credit card information that can that's a serious consequences right so this framework takes care of it which is really great um and there are a lot of other options here, right? So if you go to custom metadata type, uh, so you have log entry tag rules. You can also tag if you wanted to add tags. So you can just go here. Um, if you wanted to add tag, right? So you can do dot add tag. So, sorry, tag one, right? <laughs> Now, okay, so that's that's pretty much how it is, right? Um, now, if to see a tag, what you can do, um, there is a uh, table. If you go under here, it's called logger tags. You can see this information here. So if I see, there will be one. Yep. So it is very uh, friendly to use this log and it's very simple to use. Now, like I said, right, you can hook this log to pretty much everything. You can hook this log to flows, Apex codes, LWC, Omni, right? Because obviously you shouldn't be doing, you know, four different things for the four different operations. You should be doing the similar stuff, right, for the four different operations. What I meant to say was that your log should go and record at one place, right? Rather than getting scattered across a few different custom objects, right? It gets very difficult to audit. It's very, it's, it's gonna get very difficult to um, uh, to monitor stuff, right? Because obviously, uh, one more one more thing I just wanted to mention, right? Because often people miss what happens when you are are going to generate an error log. Let's say you get an exception. How are you going to make sure the right people are getting notified? Are you going to set up an alert system to say, hey, there's an exception? Fire, fire an email to the admin or to the senior developers or an architect, right? So that, or an operation team for that matter. So you need to consider that, right? Just having a logger framework is not just enough, right? It is a one step in the process, right? That you got a logger framework in. And once you got a logger framework in, you need to work out a process, right? Working out a process is very important. You need to work with your architects. You need to work with your design uh, lead, architect, whatever, right? Depending upon the work out with who you want to work out, right? The right people to frame up the process, frame up the right pattern to be used, right? So the developers feel com confident. And some companies, you may not even have architects. You have lead developers, right? They, who plays the role of an architect. That's great. I mean, you work with them and, you know, help them to, you know, work with them to form a pattern, form a 
a compliance document around what all things needs to be documented and what happened to PCI, uh, what happened to the data, uh, sensitive data, how it get masked, all those things needs to be nailed down and what happened to the data purge, right? Um, you can also do a purge if you go to home here, you can do purge in a batch, you can run the purge, you can do that, you can run a purge. You wanted to run log purge, it runs it for you, or you can also schedule it, right? Like I said, um, if you set up the date, it will do that stuff behind the scene, the day log retention, right? After that, a schedule class will run and it will make sure that it it cleans up your log, right? Because that's the right thing to do. Otherwise, you're going to end up in having a million rows in a, a in a table, which is not really great, right? So... So yeah, that's that's pretty much I wanted to talk about from a from a logger framework. I mean, I I personally, you know, I've used this uh, uh, framework a lot, and I believe that you know this is a pretty amazing uh, logger framework. That that being said, right, RFLib is great as well, and there are other frameworks which is equally good, um, equally good. Sorry, for some reason I can't pronounce things. Yeah, it's bloody, it's almost seven, right? I had a long day, so I'm a bit tired. So, but I, at the same time, I thought, you know, I haven't done videos for a while because a lot of things going on. As you know, I recently published uh, my book, Transhumanist book. This is my second book. The first was on Apex. So obviously it's more relevant to this conversation, right? Apex design pattern. And if you haven't bought that, just give it a try, right? It's a, it's a good book. Uh, it's my first book. Um, I, if you've been following along, um, you might have actually, um, let me see Amazon, right? Yeah, this is my, this is my second book, right? Now, if I go to my author name, um, so this is my first book, right? So this book. I won't lie, I've sold so far 50 copies because obviously I can see the dashboard in Amazon. I sold 50 copies, published last year. Not bad for a first time author, right? Because I was not thinking to write any book, right? But then I thought, hey, I've seen a lot of, um, lot of uh, spaghetti codes getting written all over the place, right? I've seen even enterprise level spaghetti code, right? It's like people enjoy Italian food. Let me do a spaghetti code. I mean, that's why I often tell people, right, if you wanted to do pasta, right, make it in the kitchen, not in the platform, right? That's that's a very bad, bad place to cook a pasta. So uh, if you know what I'm trying to say, right? Um, so I wrote this book based on my experience. You know, I'm a big fan of design patterns, right? I've used patterns. I've extensively used factor pattern. Even when I was a C-Shop developer, I used to use different parents, right? I bought that knowledge to the Salesforce, right? Because I was wondering why people are not using solid principle, which is the most obvious things for me, you know, to, to do when I write a code. But that being said, you have to be very careful not to over abstract things, right? Because you need to have a balance, right? Balance to make sure you're writing a good object oriented code because Apex, like it or not like it, Apex is not a functional language. It is an object-oriented language. Even JavaScript, even though it's a dynamic language, is you know, some people... I mean, I personally didn't like JavaScript when I first used to write many years ago. I said, yuck, it's one of the worst languages because I've been... I'm used to more static language. Like, I use C++. I use Object Pascal, uh, which is called Delphi. I use, you know, Java I've used a bit, and I've used, uh, you know, C sharp, sorry, that's my bread and butter. And then, you know, I have to use JavaScript. I say, yuck, because it, it doesn't, you have to, it's not a static language, right? Because you get exceptions in the runtime. And that was worse, right? Because you write a tons of code and then you realize, oh, it's not working. Because had the compiler been told at the very beginning, hey, this, this is a syntax error, then because it won't tell you it's a syntax error. Um, so yeah, fun fun times, right? But now I fixed my beef with you know JavaScript. So I've done a lot of JavaScript code in LWC. So I'll be honest, right? I don't mind writing it, but that's not my first choice, right? Um, so yeah, so uh, 
sorry, I digress, right? I think I talk too much about this and that. Um, so yeah, if the, the, if this book excites you, right, I would highly encourage you to go and read it. You will find it useful. I, I've added a um, few lines of code uh, in every topic. And, um, you know, I've also talked about some of the code smell, right? Best way to write a code. So you will enjoy it, right? It is not a fancy book. It is like 150 page or something. I remember writing it. So you will find it useful. So I think that's enough with the marketing contact, right? Okay, sorry. Um, so um, this is a place. I'll put the link in the description below, right? For you to figure out, you know, if you wanted to install it, that's up to you. If you don't, no worries. You know, consider that an extra thing you watched today. Um, all right. So that being said, that's all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday. Adios.